All right. What's good, uh, everyone? Uh, welcome to the Through It All podcast. Uh, the idea behind each episode is just to uncover one's true story and have honest conversations about overcoming the difficulties of life. Um, and with that, we got today's special guest, Dawson Baker. Um, Dawson plays basketball at University of California, Irvine, and is currently majoring in sociology. Uh, he graduated from Capo Valley High School, same one as me, in 2018 and went on a two-year mission trip to Micronesia Gu in Guam. And after that two-year period of not touching a basketball, he comes uh, back to UCI and is the Big West Freshman of the Year. Um, so such a cool path, um, and it's only year two, so I'm uh, excited to get in this one. And uh, how you uh, how you feeling today, man? I'm great. I'm excited to be here, man. Yeah. I love what you're doing, and I'm excited to be a part of it. I appreciate you, man. So just to kind of give a little background, as I said a little bit earlier, um, when Dawson was a senior and I was a sophomore, we were on the same team. Uh, so that's how I know him. Um, been always been super cool to me, but just to kind of get into it, you had a like obviously a legendary high school career, um, and that's kind of why I want to start. You got like MVP, you know, first team all county, CIF player of the year, and then I was reading in your bio, you score the most points in capital history. So, how did it feel when you reached all of those high goals you set? Like, kind of looking back on it, it was crazy, man. It was super exciting. Um, I think honestly, like going into high school. I was literally just looking at my brothers, and they were kind of the pedestal that I was chasing. I wasn't really worrying about, like, anyone else, but being as good as my brothers. Um, and so I remember when I passed one of my brothers that played at Capo Valley as well, his scoring title. It was kind of like a cool thing, and he was at the game too. So it was that was really what I was chasing, and I think I ended up, like, at the top of the scoring leader at the high school, like, early into my senior year. Yeah. So I had a ton of time to kind of get a gap. Um and it was definitely an honor, and it was something cool. And now I look back, and I'm like, man, that's cool. I don't think anyone's going to catch it. No. It was, uh, it was awesome, though, yeah. No, you were cooking, bro, because I remember, so modern day, just for everyone out there, like, listening, is, like, when when you were a senior, they were, like, the like one of the best high schools in the country. They had Bull Bull, like, insane recruit, and, like, a bunch of other guys that were really good. And you, like, you cooked them. You, I, I want to say you dropped, like, 30 on them. So, like... Like, did you, like, when you go into those games and, like, those states where you're just, like, zoned in, do you think about how you're going to play? Do you, like, do you chase an outcome, like, oh, I have to get 30, or do you just let the game, like, you just absorb everything? Usually I let the game come to me. I let the game provide what it needs and see what's there, and then I take it, you uh -huh. know? And then especially in high school when um, a lot of the offense was run through me and I had to be aggressive and play make all the time, usually, I you know, that just had – that was the role I had to be, right. and so I had to step up and, and kind of do that um, constantly. Um, and so, you know, seeing what the game provided, whether it was maybe I had to pass more, maybe I had to score more, right? and just and just being ready for it. Because you were making, like, obviously, like you said, earlier in your senior year, you were getting, like, you, you hit the, like, most points record. So that was early. But, like, even before then, junior year, you guys won a CIF championship. I saw that at the Honda Center. Super dope. Um, um I wish I was out there, bro. That would have been fun. Sit on that bench and just <laughs> get a ring. Uh, but um, you were like, you were turning a lot of heads and like making a lot of noise. Like, oh, this dude Dawson, he's gonna really cook this year. So like, kind of knowing all that, did you feel any um, like, did that affect you, like, if at all, or like, were you th was were you consciously thinking about like that? I don't think so. I think I, I no one really expects anything out of me that I don't expect of myself, you know? Mm. And I think uh, no one could have higher expectations that I have for myself. The way I work, the way I kind of, like, think about the game is is that it's such a high level that I don't think anyone could really have any expectations that are too big for me. Um, and so with that approach, I think everything was coming from me. It wasn't coming from anyone else. Wasn't have to, I didn't have to play for anyone else. I didn't have to score for anyone else. I was doing it for myself and my goals. Um, and so for that reason, I think it was very easy. You know, the pressure kind of was like off other people. The pressure I'm putting it on is myself. Mm, that's what's up. So you you commit to UCI after, when was that? Was that after your senior year or was it mid-senior year? I forgot. It was after my senior year. Yeah, after your senior year. Okay. And you, you choose to take a two-year mission trip to Guam. Obviously, like, I know super considerate to the church, but, like, did you feel any resistance of taking it just because you had built up so much momentum with hoops and, like, you had to take a two-year mission? Or, like, what was your thoughts on yeah, that? I, fun, I mean, like, I made that decision to go on a mission mm. not at the end of my senior year. I made that decision when I was a little kid. Mm. Like, I really wanted to do that. I saw my brothers do it. I saw some of my sisters do it. 
And I thought it was something that would have been great for me. And uh, seeing the experiences that they had was like, okay, I want that for myself. Regardless if I have a scholarship on the line or not, I want to do that for me. And I think I'll be a better person, a better basketball player because of it. And I kind of had to trust that process and trust in God in a way. Um, and so that decision wasn't really that hard, especially with, like, just having one scholarship. And luckily UCI was – cool about you know deferring the scholarship to when I get back and stuff like that um but I don't I really honestly don't believe I would have been as good of a player my freshman year without that mission mm, that's awesome can you like run me through like so your two years in Guam like just run me through that whole experience like yeah. this is the key points that pop up or float I up mean, to your head it was crazy uh there's so many things i mean so many things i learned um but i think the place i served my mission was the coolest thing about it i mean i served on some little islands um that were just so third world like i was sleeping on the ground living a little box like i didn't have a bathroom sometimes sometimes i'd go to the bathroom in like this little like a uh, little box that we had to empty out sometimes mm-hmm. showering with like a bucket and so it was super third world um but the pe- people there were super humble super beautiful the water was just like warm and super uh clear you can see through it um the lands were so green and everything um but i think that was the coolest experience about it was just seeing all that Mm. what did you extract from it that made you become the basketball player you were like your freshman year a lot of it was just mentality i think i think my appreciation for the game really went up when i didn't have Mm. it you know once once you lose something you really kind of sit back and and think about man that's that's something that i really i really cherish and really want to take advantage of when i come back um and so i think my mentality towards the game i came back a little bit more hungry a little more understanding of the game i think also it gave my 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 body some time to kind of develop a little bit more you know some freshmen when they come in they're they're kind of scrawny and so two years kind of gave my body the time to kind of develop a little bit more um kind of give me ahead of some freshmen Mm. Now, like, what exactly did you do, like, in Guam? Were you just, like, spreading the faith? Is that what it was? Or, like, talk to me about that experience. Yeah, I mean, every day looked a little bit different. Um, but a lot of it was going around, contacting people, um, talking in their language, and sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. And that came in many forms. Sometimes it was service. Sometimes it was helping people with whatever they're doing. Um, if there was, like, a typhoon or a storm and their house broke down, you're helping them, like, kind of fix up their house again or are you trying to share about Jesus Christ because yeah. a lot of them don't really know that much about Jesus Christ yeah that's awesome man so were you like were you able to touch a basketball at all or like how did like could you even do any of that a little bit I mean it wasn't like playing at a certain competition or anything right. really playing at all it was kind of just like in the morning sometimes we have some exercise time that we could kind of use and there was like an outdoor kind of basketball because the people there love basketball um and so, like, I got to touch the basketball every once in a while. But for some, like, for some reason, I really wanted to take that time, those two years, kind of get away from basketball, mm. get away from myself, um, find something different in myself other than basketball because, you know, that's kind of what I've been labeled as in, in high school and as a person. is like, oh, Dawson, that's, that's basketball, you know? Right. And so it was nice to kind of meet people that didn't know the basketball me. Yeah. You know? and yeah. Was, and, and at times it was cool to show them the basketball me because they love basketball and they couldn't see him dunk there. And so like things like that were cool to show them. Right. But, uh, it was nice to get away from the game. That's dope, man. Were you like, were you able to stay in contact with like your family? Because I know there was like, it was email, right? Yeah. But yeah. could you like text, go on social media? Like how did that work? Uh, Not really. So the place that, I mean, I was staying was super um, indigenous, like I was saying. And so a lot of times I was writing letters that would kind of take months to get to my family. Wow. Um, and then I was sometimes staying on some outer islands that, uh, that didn't really have internet connection and stuff. And I couldn't send emails, uh, like until like once a month we would fly in, we would oh, boat into the inner Island and then we could kind of write some emails to our family. But I only video called my family four times total. On my home mission. So what, like, Obviously, I know you said you were committed to your faith and all that, but like if, if and when there were times where you like were, did you feel like you were missing out or a, hey, oh, I wonder what's going back on at home or I wish I could just be here for a little bit, you know, like what was your kind of mentality to accept that reality and move with yeah, it? Yeah, it's definitely, it was definitely a challenge, especially at first when you're first adjusting to it. Um, but the biggest thing I think that helped me the most was just changing your mindset from just a normal person to a missionary. Um, and that lifestyle and just committing to it like anything you do. Um, but there definitely was some things back home that happened that kind of like, oh, man, I wish I 
I wish I was able, able to be a part of that. Like UC Irvine, they went into the March Madness and they upset a team. Yes. The year that I yes. could have been there. Yeah. Um, and so things like that are like, oh, shoot. But then you kind of take a step back and realize, you know, why I'm here and yeah. and all the other blessings you're having. And so it, it comes and goes with some things. But ultimately, I'm grateful for those two years. I wouldn't, wouldn't, don't regret anything about it. That's beautiful, man. That's really cool to hear. Um, and th- this is kind of like the last one I wanted to hit about, like, you being on your mission trip. Did you, like, was there ever a thought or wonderment of a, what, am I going to be like the Dawson I was, like, in high school? Can I get back to it? Did that ever, like, run your mind or, or no? It did. It did. And that was a hard part, uh, especially when you don't touch a basketball for that long. <laughs> you don't really play against anyone your size or any competition. You kind of just lose faith a little bit in, in yourself, almost like, man, do I still, like, <laughs> play this game? Like, yeah. Um, and so when I first came back, I was a little worried and I wasn't expecting to, I was thought I was gonna maybe take a red shirt year, trying to get like a feel for the game. Cause that's usually what happens with missionaries when they come back, um, uh, to play sports. Um, but I remember I go, I went in the, when I first came home, I went in the gym and I kind of just shot by myself and just, it was just like riding a bike. I'm like, okay, like I know how to do this, like yeah. whatever. I went to go play pickup with some guys, some professional overseas guys. And I played pretty good. And that was one time where I was like, okay, like I can play still. Right. And it slowly just took small increments, small steps. Finally, just like, yeah, like I still got this kind of thing. And I was even better. I felt, I felt like I was better than I was in high school. Mm. And then you come back, like you come out. I think it's like the dopest thing, bro. You, <laughs> you, two years, don't touch a basketball, sleeping on the floor. And then you come out and you're big West freshman of the year. Like, I know you're a super humble dude, obviously, but like, tell us what that meant to you. Not necessarily the award, but the process getting to that point. Yeah, I mean, it was a grind for sure. And it was really hard, frustrating at moments where I was like, my conditioning wasn't there when I first got back. And there was a bunch of nagging pains because my body wasn't used to that level yet. Um, so a lot of things like that I had to work through throughout that year. Um, and I just remember at the end of that year, we, we lost in the championship game of our tournament. And I had just tears of just almost joy uh-huh. that I just did so much that year. I was so grateful for like kind of the opportunity I had at UC Irvine grateful for how I took advantage of it and in the year I had it was just it was more than I could even imagine yeah and and first of all that's awesome man like super cool I was tuning in like I was telling you earlier like I was watching as many games as I could or that I knew about and I just like I turn on the channel you guys are playing USC and then it's Dawson Baker (laughs) three-pointer so it's like when you see like and that's just that's the thing like even when you're in high school I always like admired about you is that like whoever stepped on the floor like it didn't phase you you know what I mean because like for me like I used to worry obsessively about that like oh this guy it's this guy this guy and when I saw you I was like dude this dude just doesn't give give a shit you know what I mean like you see bull bull and you're like all right I'm gonna cook him and then you drop 30 and we beat modern day or whatever so it's like when you see USC or whatever the label on the shirt can you go into depth about your mindset about that because like I want to learn how to, you know what I mean? Just like talk through that process where it's like, oh, USC doesn't matter. It's just a game. Yeah. Like run me through like how you think through things like that. Yeah. I mean, a lot of times I don't build it up in my head too much like some players do. Yeah. You know, some players think about uh, this guy and this stat line and what he's doing and all the offers he may have yeah. and things like that. And at the end of the day, when it's the ball's tits in the air and it's time to go, like, it's the same core I've been working on that he's been working on. It's, you know, we're bleeding the same blood. Like this guy is just another guy, you know, it's just another dude. Yeah. Um, and so once the ball tips, usually my mind just comes to a certain level and I'm just ready to go from there. Uh, but I think it starts with like a lot of the work I put in just like building that confidence in myself comes through that work, you know, and seeing it, seeing it happen. And obviously it turns in that confidence in, in my practice to my game is, is another thing. Um, but at the end of the day, I feel like when once the ball's on the floor and we're we're going at it, like I, I like my odds against anyone. And that's just mm-hmm. how my mind's always been. Yeah. And and that just comes from like trusting the work and the humble repetition that you've kind of put in. So like when you let's say like you're going through because obviously you ebb and flow in the season regardless, like and you're at a low, right? What moments do you reflect back on of your like path and like you kind of use it to draw a little bit of strength, like, oh yeah, yeah, I've been here before, like this can help me out right now to get me through this point, if that makes right, sense. Right, right. Yeah, I think it depends on the aspect of the game I might be struggling with, whether that be shooting or whether that be 
kind of a little sloppy with the ball, things like that. And usually kind of after practice, I'll put that work in just to give myself a little confidence that, like, you know, I put the work in. I deserve to play good now, you know? Mm -hmm. Kind of building that with myself, that trust with myself. Um, but I always draw back to, like, you know, maybe a good game that I had. Like, man, I could do this against yeah. so-and-so. I can, I can, you know, I can pick it back up yeah. and kind of building that self-confidence again. Nice, man. So going off of work, what is your, like, what's the – your favorite place to ever hoop like that'll just put you in the calmest state and not a game necessarily, but more like it's, it's just Dawson with his headphones or whatever. I don't know yeah. if you use music, but where are you going? Usually it's my church. Cause mm. all the churches have a bill or a basketball court in it. Uh -huh. And so my home church, um, back where I'm from is kind of a place I've grown up in uh -huh. growing up, working out with my brothers in there, going by myself there in high school. Um, and that's probably the most hours I spend in the gym is in that gym. And so I'm, that's like a home to me. It's more, it's more of a comfort zone for me. Yeah. Um, so that's definitely the place where like, I can just like let my mind go and just hoop. That's awesome, man. I remember, um, I was at my boy Will's house when I was real like little or whatever, and your neighbors with him. And then it was like late at night or whatever. And we just see like you shooting on the, your neighbor's court. Yeah, I forgot. That's what another, that's another court. That's a great one. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say that. And it was just like, they had lights up and, <laughs> yeah. and Will and I were just like peeking through the fence. Like, Oh, there's Dawson just <laughs> getting buckets. But that's really cool. Um, cause I've seen it all through high school and whatever. Um, so just kind of transitioning like to your ultimate dream with basketball, like heard about like what led you to this point and like no strings attached Dawson Baker. What do you, what do you, what do you want to do? with basketball um i don't think i have a set goal mm -hmm. i think i just want to take it as far as i can go with it um and let the journey kind of just go where where it may lead um and wherever that be um and i i don't know where that's gonna be and that's the kind of exciting part about <laughs> it you know um but i think as long as i'm doing what i'm doing continue to get better continue to learn you know i think the sky's the limit i think i could go um play anywhere for for a little bit um and part of me is excited for the part where, like, I could kind of acknowledge I've done everything I can do with basketball. You know, I've I became the best version of me in basketball that yeah. I can be and kind of move on with my life in a way. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I, I do want to play professionally in somewhere that might be overseas, that might be here, wherever that is. Um, I'm excited for it, and I'm down for the journey if my, my body allows it. Yeah, that's awesome, man. W at what point in your career did you feel like – the most adversity, like aside from the mission, yeah, like just specifically on the court, it could be coming back from it, but where did you feel like the most struggle for you? Honestly, it was in high school, either, there's two points probably, probably my freshman year in high school when I played varsity was a little bit hard just because I was used to playing with eighth graders, then playing with like <laughs> full on seniors, yeah. it was just a big jump. Um, and I really wasn't that skilled. Like, you know, some players nowadays, like, before they even touch high school, they're doing like, they're doing like one-on-one -on -one sessions with NBA trainers, yeah, yeah. like crazy <laughs> stuff. Like I did none of that. I taught myself how to play. I did all of that myself. Yeah. And with my brothers and my dad, that's the only ones that really kind of, you know. <laughs> yeah. And so I was very raw coming into that experience. And that first year taught me a lot. Um, so that was one. And also playing club. I played at a very like prestigious club, Dream Vision. Yep. Um, and so we were going to tournaments where we were playing like, guys are nba now like just dudes like we were playing against some of the great greatest players in the country out of high school and i was just kind of that was the only team i didn't start on uh -huh. and there was just a ton of guys on our team and obviously club basketball was a little biased towards players right. and stuff like that and so all the politics of basketball kind of bothered me and my confidence was kind of shocked a little bit mm. in that in that situation um and so those were probably two times where i was probably at the lowest points basketball wise for me where i was like man I, i'm in a rut or i'm something i need to figure out here mm, that's yeah I, I remember that you guys would practice at uh capo sometimes yeah. with dream vision so that kind of like what did you what did you what was your biggest like i don't know teaching moment that you got out of the club basketball scene because i remember like i saw a practice and like like you were you sh you, sh you should have started yeah. you know what i mean yeah yeah and that was kind of the thing that's kind of just the eye opener for me of the politics of basketball whatever it may be, because that was the only team I was really, like, I just never started on, you know? Yeah. And sometimes you have a coach that just might not trust in you all the way or just will rather play someone else or look a different way in the system. Um, and I think for me, I mean, that that was a huge confidence builder 
in the other hand, where like I played against some of the best players, you know, in in high school. So coming back to high school basketball, it was like, okay, like <laughs> I'm not gonna see anyone I didn't see in club, you know. For and sure. So like, I think that was a big thing for me. Just like I think that's where I kind of got the confidence of whoever I'm playing. Like I've seen guys like you. I've seen guys more athletic. I've seen guys better shooter. And I've seen a better defender. Like things like that. Gotcha. That's awesome, man. So. Just to kind of wrap it up, I do this with uh, every guest. Um, what does through it all mean to you, like your personal definition of it? Through it all. Um, man, it can mean a lot of things. I like how it's all, you know, through mm -hmm. it all. I mean, there's still things going on, you know, and sometimes we live in the past and the present, but I mean, there's still things that are going to happen in the future. Um, but being through it all is being consistent, you know. I think no matter what it is, all things and all times, like, you're going through it. Right. Um, I think it's, like, an everlasting thing. You know, I don't think it's, like, a temporal thing or, like, a something in the present that you're going through it. Not one thing, but it's all things. That's a beautiful definition. I love that one. Um, now, three questions at the end that I kind of like to finish up with. Um, so the first one, if you could have lunch with any three people in this world, they could be <laughs> present or they could be from the past. What people would you invite, and then what would you get to eat? Okay, all right. I'll start with the people. Actually, I'll start with the food. It's <laughs> easier, probably. It's going to be something Mexican for sure. That's my favorite type of food. Um, maybe some, like, sweet pork. Maybe okay. some, like, sweet pork ta tacos. Nice. I like that. Um, and people, I would for sure, have Kobe Bryant. Um, that's kind of been an idol for me, someone I've looked up to my whole life and kind of been my hero in a way. Um, so that's one person for sure would be there. And this is this is all the same the same uh meal, all these people, or is yeah. this like okay, yeah, yeah. Right. Just make sure there's no beef in between <laughs> what I'm bringing out. Uh can we put Jesus Christ in there? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> throw Jesus in right, there. Jesus in there. <laughs> Jesus and Kobe would be great. I love it. One two right there. Uh <laughs> That's a good one. Oh, man. One more. I need someone to lighten the mood a little bit. I get serious in there. Man, that's tough. One more. I'll, how about I put my grandpa? Because I've never met him. He passed away before I was born. Mm. And so I think that would be a cool experience. That's awesome, man. Yeah. Great answer. Great answer. Great, great group. Okay. Uh, the next one. We're going to switch it up a little bit. Okay. Favorite Disney princess? <laughs> First one comes to mind is Cinderella. <laughs> right on. Right on. All right. And then the last question I always like to finish with. Um, advice you'd give to Dawson Baker at his lowest? At his lowest? Uh, probably it's all worth it. And I think it's a simple statement that kind of it goes deep, you know. Mm -hmm. Everything I'm doing is worth it no matter what it is. Um, and enjoy the ride. I mean, on this bracelet, it says find joy in the journey. Mm. Always wear it. Um, and so that's something I think uh, it's a good constant reminder. Yeah. That's awesome, man. Young D bake, young D bake, <laughs> young D bake. Is there anything else you want to add before we, cause that was it. That was the last one. No, man, that was, that was great. That was fun. Here, man. Thanks man. We're good. All right. Dope dude. That's good.